viewers the latest news about ethiopia amhara tigray and eritrea is that well, there are reports from several sources about the ongoing war on the eritrea tigray border and in western tigray that i will share with you in this video viewers in the previous video i had informed you that fighting is going on on eritrea tigray border between eritrean defense force and tigray defense force for the last several days in several areas and according to reports the war between eritrean defense force and tigray defense force has intensified at the eritrea tigray border heavy war continues in nearby areas of eritrea border and now according to the latest reports tigray defense force has gained full control over adi gosho and surrounding areas after heavy fighting and according to reports tigray defense force soldiers have entered in adi gosho and in yesterday's video i informed you that tigray defense force sources has been claimed that tigray defense force has taken control of shiraro after defeating eritrean defense force and now according to reports tigray defense force has gained control over adi gosho and surrounding areas where adi gosho is an important place in western tigray it is located near the eritrea border adi gosho is a very important place in terms of war for one it is located on the border of eritrea from here tigray defense force can prevent eritrean defense force from entering the tigray region from eritrea and can respond to their attacks on the other hand tigray defense force soldiers can take action against the amhara forces militias and eritrean soldiers in western tigray on the other hand as i informed you in the previous video tigray defense force sources claim that tigray defense force has started operation against the amhara forces its allies in western tigray thus now tigray defense force soldiers are present on both sides of western tigray like humera and according to reports fighting is going on between amhara forces its allies and tigray defense force in walkath viewers and reports that ethiopia's military is planning to enter the tigray region capital of makle and eliminate tigray defense force a top military official says aimed diplomatic effort to end conflict in the country's north the horn of africa country has been gripped by war for more than a year with the federal military and its allies battling forces loyal to the tigray people's liberation front well this week two top united states diplomats flew into addis ababa to push for a ceasefire trying to build on tentative signs of a thaw in relations between warring parties including the release of political prisoners In an interview with state affiliated media outlet Panam Broadcast late on Friday Ethiopian Defense Force Deputy Army Chief General Abibao Tadise said the country would not be at peace until the Tigray People Liberation Front was eliminated and Tigray is a part of Ethiopia and no force will stop us from entering we will enter and we will eliminate the enemy there should not be any confusion about this he said the people of ethiopia should not think that is our it is not our the main thing here is we have stopped because we have to prepare ourselves and this enemy is still there and it has to be absolutely eliminated we will not negotiate with them was in a tweet on thursday when part of mr abibio's interview was aired on fana Mr. Gedda Churida, Tigray People's Liberation Front spokesman, said, "We are not losing sleep over Abibao's plan." And Ethiopian government spokesperson Ligesetulu and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's spokesperson 
Billionaire Yom did not immediately respond to request for comment on Mr. Abiyo's remarks. Separately, Air Force Chief Commander Yelma denied targeting civilians in the conflict, saying his forces have the technology to avoid doing so. And the claims by Tigray People Liberation Front that our Air Force is targeting civilians is a lie, he said on Ethiopian Broadcast Corporation Television. And Tigray People Liberation Front spokesperson Gada Churida could not be reached to comment on this. But many pictures and videos shared by Tigray media of people's civilians who died and injured due to the heavy air strikes by Ethiopian Air Force. Was US President Joe Biden, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and the United Nations Human Rights Office have raised concern about air strikes. And the Tigray People Liberation Front says Mr. Abe want to end the country's ethnically based federal government system, while Mr. Abe says the Tigray People Liberation Front is hungry to seize the national power it once held. And for months, there has been an uneasy settlement between the two sides. Punctuated by sporadic fighting, Tigray People Liberation Front force control most of Tigray but are surrounded by hostile forces from neighboring region of Mahara and Afar, which are allied with the federal military. And the conflict which broke out in November 2020 has displaced millions and triggered widespread hunger. In recent month, there have been multiple diplomatic and political effort to end it, including pressure from the United States. And in contrast, the recent U.S. decision to suspend Ethiopia from its African Growth and Opportunity Act AGOA, seems to have elicited a response from Abe. The suspension from AGO was followed by phone calls and visits by U.S. officials, including a recent call by President Biden. The Ethiopian government, which is short of funds, seems to be responding to this U.S. policy decision, which may also involve the U.S. taking a tough position on IMF and World Bank support for the government and at the ongoing debt renegotiation. However, if something fruitful is to come out of this, Biden's administration need to stay on course and continue implementing the executive order. And after all, despite some peaceful gestures such as the release of a few political prisoners, Abe's government has continued the war by bombing Tigray, which has killed at least 108 civilians so far this year. And as also indicated by Deputy Chief of Staff of the Ethiopian Defense Force, General Abibu Tidise, it appears the government is simply buying time for its next offensive. Now is the time to silence Ethiopia's guns by Mr. Siu given these risks. It would be ill-advised for the U.S. to change course and stop pushing for peaceful resolution of the conflict. But the way this is executed has to be fair and practical. And for instance, the suggestion by Bruton and Fitz that the leader of Tigray's government and armed forces must surrender as a precondition for negotiation is not only out of tough touch with reality, but if it somehow occurred, would once again subject the Tigrayan people to the whims of the regimes in Addis Ababa and Asmara. And in fact, to achieve sustainable peace, Tigrayan should get security guarantees that such attacks and foreign military occupation can never happen again. As General the Tsadgin said, and as most Tigrayans believe, the Tigray Defense Force is here to stay to serve this purpose. And if anything, as the war was planned for two years under the guest of a fake peace, peace pact by the leaders of Ethiopia and Eritrea with the intention of neutralizing the Tigray People Liberation Front, the solution to the current crisis may be the removal from power of these two leaders the peace that delivered total war against Tigray. And while that is also impractical, pursuing actions that limit the ability of Ethiopia and Eritrea to purchase army arms may be needed as it may force the Ethiopian government to come to the negotiation table. And given that 
the Tigray government has met the preconditions set by the U.S. by returning its forces to Tigray. And the time now seems right to impose further constraints and particularly an arms embargo on both the Ethiopian and Eritrean governments. And failing that, there are also African-led mediation efforts to the U.S. is supporting. And the U.S. State Department reported on 28 December that Secretary of State Antonio Blinken made a phone call to President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya and both agreed on the urgent need for a cessation of hostilities, unhindered humanitarian access and end to human rights abuses and violations, and a negotiated resolution to the conflict. And Blinken said the U.S. supports Kenyatta and AU envoy Obasanjo's peace efforts. So viewers, so far the latest update. For more latest update, please subscribe channel. Thanks for watching.